Hey guys, Paradox here. Today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the first ever smart Rubik's Cube, the Geiger Super Cube made by Xiaomi. So the Geiger Cube is a magnetic speed cube with Bluetooth sensors built into the centerpieces and the core that allow you to track your movements in real time using the Super Cube app which is available on both iOS and Android. It's available at SpeedCube Shop for 42 US dollars, around the same price as a flagship cube. The SuperCube app also features several other guides and mini games, all of which will be covered in this video, but first, let's take a quick look at the hardware. So in the box, you'll find the Geiger Cube, a cool looking headphone styled charger, and an instruction pamphlet written entirely in Chinese. The charger snaps onto the charging ports in the green and blue center caps fairly easily and has a micro USB port on the side, but the cable itself is not included, which isn't really a big deal since almost everyone already has one anyway. Out of the box, the cube was very heavy and the magnets felt very strong. Also, almost all of the magnets were dislodged, making it sound very loud and clicky. Taking a knife piece apart, it turns out there are slots to keep the magnets in place, but no glue was used, so they likely fell out during the assembly process. It's an easy but very time consuming and annoying fix, so I haven't bothered with it yet. The mechanism is another generic speed cube design similar to the Volk and Gan cubes, but with its own unique grooves on the pieces. The cube's performance is pretty mediocre, similar to that of a budget cube, but without that cheap plastic feel. By far, the worst part about the physical cube though are the sticker shades. The faded orange looks more like a light red, and instead of an actual red, they use a very faint light pink, which is indistinguishable with the very pale light green. Luckily though, Speed Cube Shop is releasing stickers for the Geiger Cube very soon that also include cutouts for the charging ports. In terms of battery life, Xiaomi claims that with an hour of play every day, a full charge can last you 30 days and in standby for 3 months. I couldn't fully test this since I haven't had the cube for very long, but in my experience over 2 days, I used up 10% of the battery doing 10,000 moves which would be around 150 solves. At this rate, it doesn't seem like it'll last me 30 days, but it should get fairly close. Ok now finally, let's go over the Super Cube app and its features, because without it, this is just a regular old cube. At the top, you'll find some useful tools and guides, and then there are these four mini games that we'll go over in just a second. Starting with the tools, the first one is more of a settings page where you can manage your cube, you can connect and disconnect it, see the current state, make real time moves, see the total number of moves you've ever made on the cube, and also have an option to recalibrate the sensors with the app. It's some pretty basic, but very useful stuff. Next up is the smart timer, and it's probably the most useful thing in the app for cubers. Once you scramble your cube with at least 6 moves, click ready and the timer will start as soon as you make your first move, and it'll stop when the cube is solved. When it's solved, it'll show your time along with your average seconds per turn, which is just the inverse of your TPS. There's no inspection and the timer doesn't track your stats at all. It does however show a badge at the top once you get a new personal best, which isn't really that helpful since you can't see your previous best anyway and you can't even see a list of solves which is probably the worst part. But overall I found the smart timer to be fairly accurate and when comparing it with other timers like a stack mat or just a regular touch timer on your iPad, my times are usually around half a second faster. Even though I know my solves are really bad overall on this cube, but that's just because of the color scheme. The next tool is Quick Solve, which I feel like will be very popular among non-cubers. It analyzes your current state, finds a solution to it, and walks you through it with the animations. Obviously not something very useful for cubers, especially since the animations are really slow, but I can see this being a huge deal for people that have never been able to solve a cube before. It can be a great morale booster and also get non-cubers more interested in learning how to really solve it on their own. And finally, the last of the four things at the top, if you're curious, is just an info page. Moving on to the games, the first one is called Cubic Run, 
One of my favorites, it's basically like a follow along memory game where you have to make the same moves on your cube as the ones the game makes. As you get to higher levels, they turn into two or three moves at a time and keep going higher and higher. I like it because it's fun yet less tedious than the others. It doesn't really take a lot of effort and it's pretty quick to do, you can progress really quickly. So overall, it's just a really great fun memory sort of puzzle. Next, let's take a look at Crazy Puzzle. This one's alright as well, but I did get a little bored of it after a while. Basically, you have to match the image in the game on your cube to complete the level, and once you complete it, it tells you what the image was. Like for example, this one was Russia. On higher levels, you have to match your cube a few different times to complete a larger image, so you can see how this starts to become a little bit tedious and repetitive. This next one's probably my least favorite because it's so much more tedious. In Complete Clone, you're given 10 seconds to observe a pattern and then have to clone that on the whole cube. The good thing is at least the patterns are actual patterns that we see on cubes and not just random scrambles, which would be an absolute nightmare. All right, so the last one is another fun one and really easy to progress through. Basically, you have a limited number of moves to get this marker or person looking thing into the target position. Again, when you get to higher levels, it starts getting a little harder with these bombs in the way. And if the dude hits it, it's game over. This game actually helps you to think better about different ways of moving pieces around the cube. And I can see it being very helpful for beginners and even non-cubers to better understand how the pieces move around a cube. Another cool trick I learned while playing with this was that if you're in a dark room or there's not enough light to see the stickers on a physical cube, like if you're watching a movie while cubing or something like that, then you can just look at the colors in the app while you solve it physically. I know it sounds pretty basic, but it's a lot of fun even if you're not in a dark room situation. So there you have it guys, the Xiaomi Geiger Cube. I'm pretty sure I've covered everything there is about this cube in this video. In terms of drawbacks, the only thing I've found with this are firstly the stickers, obviously which I've already mentioned. The good thing is though that they're easily replaceable, but the bad thing is you can't actually change the color scheme inside the app, so it'll be a little bit difficult to coordinate if you're trying to play the games in the app and your cube has different color stickers, so it just gets a little bit weird that way. But overall, the biggest flaw that I've found with the Geiger Cube is how the calibration between the sensors and in-app cube state can get easily messed up when you turn very fast. For example, I noticed whenever I'd hand scramble it for fun and quick ready, the cube state would be different in the app. So when I solved it physically, the timer wouldn't stop because the app still thought that it was scrambled. As long as you scramble at a normal speed, I found it to be alright. The issue hasn't really happened during a solve for me yet, which is good. So yeah, this is definitely a very annoying issue, but at least the process to recalibrate the sensors is easy and quick. Other than that, there aren't really any other huge problems with this. One thing to keep in mind though is that what you see here isn't necessarily all that you'll get, since they could always roll out more updates for the app later with newer features and games and things since they already have all the hardware and sensors and things already in place. This will help keep it refreshed so you don't get bored and appeal to people who didn't find these initial features worthwhile. So my final thoughts are that it's a great, well-rounded and reliable product, suitable for many different levels of cubers, and it's at a fair price too. A few things I hope they add in the future are the ability to change the color scheme of the cube in the app, so you can match it if you change your physical cube stickers. Another fun one would be multiplayer capabilities, so you can compete with friends by having multiple cubes connected to the same app. And finally, a way to actually track your stats and times in the smart timer, because without that it's pretty boring and you can't properly practice with the Geiger Cube. Luckily, knowing that Xiaomi is such a huge tech brand, not just in China, but worldwide, and that they're continuously refreshing their massive product line, means that there's a good chance we'll see updates and maybe even a new physical version of this cube. If that happens, I think it would be so cool if they actually partner with a cubing company to make a flagship level cube with built-in Xiaomi sensors. So yeah, those are all of my opinions on the Geiger Cube. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Please leave a like if you did and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with my future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.